Gases, an introduction and review. The goals of this podcast will be to explain what characteristics of gases define them, learn the pressure, what pressure means and the units that are involved, and this will also be involved later on in the chapter as well, and be able to visualize how we think about gases in sort of a general sense. First of all, what is a gas? In a gas, the particles are going to move for the most part freely. This isn't going to be like a solid where they're locked into a lattice, or even like a liquid where they're associated with each other and constantly touching. So along those same lines, unlike liquids and solids, they're seldom going to touch. This means that because there's all this empty space in between the gas, they're compressible, or in other words, you can push them down into a smaller space. They also exert pressure on their surroundings because they're constantly trying to expand and stopped by whatever container is holding them. Like a liquid and unlike a solid, they don't have a defined shape. They take the shape of whatever, is, whatever container is around them. They're going to expand to fill their surroundings. And if you put multiple gases in one container, they're going to mix evenly given enough time. They are lower density than liquids and solids, so they have a lower grams per mil. Now, I want to, you to watch a short little clip from a simulation at the, from the people at FET. So go on here, play around for a little bit. We'll do a little bit more guided practice with this in a minute. But this is how you want to think of gases. For the most part, we're able to treat them as these sort of rebounding billiard balls that bounce off each other. And as you can notice, as two interact, they bounce off each other, they interact, they bounce off the walls. And um, if you use this a little bit to play around, you can add more gas using this. You can change the gas, you can change the temperature, and watch what happens as you change the volume and see what's happening to the pressure. Um, and again, we'll do this in more detail in a later podcast. But for now, this just gives you an idea of how to think about gases. So there's something, there's a couple of things we need to define. First of all, pressure. So the SI units for pressure is going to be force over a given area. Since force is in newtons and areas in meters squared, our unit here is newtons over meters squared. This is called a Pascal, and it's abbreviated PA. Now, just because this is the SI unit doesn't mean there aren't other units. And you'll see that in pressure, unlike some of the other situations that we've had in this class, there are lots of different units that get used. So the three big ones are tor, atmosphere, and milligrams of mercury. So one atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury, which is 101,325 pascals, or a lot of times you'll see that as 101 kilopascals. So let's get a little bit of practice using these conversion factors. Let's convert 825 millimeters of mercury to atmospheres, pascals, and kilopascals. We'll start with our 825 millimeters of mercury. So when we set up our conversion factor, we'll divide by 760 millimeters of mercury multiply by our one ATM to get 1.08 ATM. Now, if we want to convert to Pascals, we could start from here. Since we have the one ATM to this many Pascals, I'm just going to start over. Never bad practice to start from the beginning. So we'll do this, putting our millimeters of mercury on the bottom so that our units cross out, leaving us with Pascals. To convert to kilopascals, we'll simply divide this by a thousand.
to get our calabascos. Now, let's go a little bit more into what an ideal gas is. When I was talking about how to visualize gases, I used some words like, for the most part, in general. And when I was saying that, what I've been talking about is what we call an ideal gas situation. So for an ideal gas, we're going to assume that molecules move completely randomly, that they don't interact with each other, and that they have no volume. We're also going to assume that if two particles collide, those are completely elastic meaning that no energy is lost to that collision. The same amount of energy comes off as goes on, is when it starts. For the most part, you'll find that, that a lot of the gases can be treated this way. It works really well at low pressures and high temperatures. So we're, if we're at a situation where we have low pressures and high temperatures, we can treat gases as ideal gases. And we'll see that this really simplifies out some of our calculations. Now, let's do a little bit of thinking about what's going to happen. What happens to the pressure if we do several things? What would happen if we increase the temperature? And what if we increase the volume? And what if we increase the number of particles? So think about the, what's happening as these little billiard balls, as we're kind of thinking of them, bounce around. And what's going to happen if we increase the temperature? As a hint for that, Think about what happens to the speed of the particles if we increase the temperature. And then think about what's going to happen to the number of collisions and situations of that sort if we increase the volume. And then what's going to happen to the number of collisions if we increase the number of particles. And that should help you predict what's going to happen. So do that before the next video or the next class. So hopefully at this point we now know what the characteristics of gas are that define them. We're able to visualize how we think of gases, and we know how we're going to work with the units of pressure so that we're able to um, actually calculate some things with gases.